It's not, I want to shoot down that plane. <laughs> Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and this is a continuation of the fluid dynamics videos and today we're looking at turbulence because turbulence is quite important for actual for, for engines. Um, so generally turbulence is regarded as a negative thing but it depends um, how it is used and uh, what the after effects of turbulence are. So generally you might have heard of turbulence in planes where um, the airflow over the wings is quite chaotic and it's not very smooth and you can feel the plane rocking about and all the rest of it. So generally, like I said, we think that turbulence is a bad thing. However, for engines, turbulence is extremely important and in the past people have gone to great measures in a sense to uh, actually um, purposely cause turbulence. So why would you want to purposely create turbulence? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the molecules for fuel are long hydrocarbon chains. Do you know, I want to shoot down that plane. <laughs> uh, your fuel, uh, so either diesel or petrol, are long molecule chains, which means that they're quite heavy compared to the oxygen and the nitrogen and just say uh, water and some CO2 because obviously uh, we have CO2 in the air naturally, you know, it's like less than a percent but we still have it. So you've got all these molecules um, that make up air, the constituent parts of air and then we have our long chain molecules. So what will happen is, is because these have more mass, uh, they will want to change direction uh, or they will resist change in direction due to their uh, momentum. So when we're trying to fill a cylinder, what will happen is, is that you have, uh, in a sense, you try to fill a cylinder, so you have a port here and you fill a cylinder um, on the intake stroke and what have you, and generally what will happen is that your fuel vapour, and this is a massive exaggeration, but your fuel vapour will want to sit at the bottom because it's heavier, and your air will want to fill the rest of it. Now obviously these proportions are well out of whack, that's not how much fuel and air is in there, but you get the point. So because these are heavy molecules and because they've been dumped into a cylinder and because the cylinder's a bottomless pit, um, it'll just want to fall in and basically just sit around at the bottom. So when we want to initiate ignition, um, we want a uh, mix, a lovely mix of the two, because the fuel will not burn without, uh, will not combust without uh, the presence of oxygen. It is a, a you know, it's a exothermic reaction between oxygen and your fuel. Basically you're oxidising the fuel to break up all these bonds and release all the energy that's inside. So we need a good mix between the two, we need a good mix between these two. So what you can do is, is if you create turbulence, if you create random chaotic mixing, um, that will ensure oh, I've got an itch. <laughs> uh, that will ensure that you have uh, adequate mixing just before combustion. Now the volume in the piston is constantly changing, so the piston gets to the bottom and then it starts to come back up. So that helps slightly. But um, one of the major things that was done um, in uh, I think it was the 70s and 80s that people started to do. Was start, uh, it was to have your ports offset, so if you look at your cylinder from above like this, um, you'd normally think, right, well we have our two inlet ports, and our inlet ports do help with um, mixing because you're not taking the lid off and just plopping loads of air in, it is to one side, so obviously the air and fuel are going to expand this way and so on, so there is a slight mix in there, but what they actually did was to move ports like this and what this did is this caused the air that came in to turn a corner as it came in like this and then it would slosh around and so on and forth, so forth and start to mix and there is loads of ways that you try and increase that mixing offset ports they used to put shrouds on valves sometimes, um, 
uh, your actual piston design can help with that. Uh, your squish band, that's important because just say if you've got like a two stroke where squish bands are, uh, you know, very visible. Um, you have your cylinder like this. And obviously when your piston comes up, there's this region here where when it's down here, when your piston's down here, it's starting to squish it a bit, but when it gets to the top, it really squirts it out into the centre, close to the spark plug, but that also causes a lot of turbulence as well. One thing I will mention, and I'll do a video on this completely separately, but um, I was talking to someone a couple of years ago, and uh, what they thought what, what they thought happened was that there's your uh, pent roof and there's your cylinder. What they thought happened is as soon as your inlet valve opens, that your injector, um, you know, that's situated just say here somewhere or somewhere further upstream, they thought your injector waits for the valve to open and then sprays fuel in. That's not what happens. Your injector sprays the back of your valve when the valve is closed. And uh, this also helps in mixing in the fact that when injectors spray fuel, it's atomized, but it's, that's a, a wrong word for it, really. Um, it's still droplets, just microfine droplets. It still hasn't evaporated yet. And if you spray the back of the valve, you know, your um, exhaust stroke, your power stroke, and then your exhaust stroke happens. So this uh, exhaust, this inlet valve um, is quite hot now. And then if you spray the back of the valve, it does two things. It cools the valve down. And number two is the fuel evaporates, takes that heat, takes that energy off the back of the valve, evaporates, and it evaporates in a big cloud here. And then as soon as your air comes in, when the valve opens, it basically carries it with it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it pushes all this vapour all the way around. And this helps with mixing and stuff like that as well, injectors. And it depends where you want to stick your injector as well. Some injectors do pulse, so some injectors do pulse... Um, and that pulse overlaps when the actual valve is open. When you go to really high RPMs, yes, your injector is actually spraying into your, combus uh, into your combustion chamber, into your cylinder. Uh, it just depends how they set it up, but generally they spray the back of the valves. It evaporates off the back of the valves, removing heat from the valves, which is great, and it also evaporates um, the fuel. And then your air has to basically drive through um, that fuel, and it basically pushes it in and mixes with it, you know, so... Uh, like I said, there's loads of different ways you can um, cause turbulence, but turbulence is really important. It's, turbulence isn't that good in your port because you're trying to flow, uh, you're trying to increase your mass flow rate, so you're trying to flow as much as you can, as quick as you can, as quick as you can especially at high RPMs. But when it's actually in the combustion chamber, or when it's literally on the lip of going into your combustion chamber, um, you want turbulence, because that causes a right nice clean mix and then you know your flame front is more stable it's generally quicker and then it's also an emissions thing as well so turbulence has become an awfully important aspect of combustion design and so on and so forth because of emissions as well because you're trying to um, keep to your stoichiometric values like or even lower than that just running ever so slightly lean and uh, yeah so that's turbulence for you so I hope that makes sense. Um, the next video, I've got a list here. So the next video, we're going to start looking at exhaust and inlet um, manifold uh, pulses and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.